OK, let's talk about today's questions. The first one, very popular question. Um, do these two parts make sense? Do you agree with them? So let's look at the first one. Page. Eight. Uh, the last part. So Satan is saying. Um, infernal world, which means hell. And thou profoundest hell, profound means deep. Receive thy new possessor, your new owner, me. One who brings a mind not to be changed by place or time. We talked about this last week, right? Satan is saying we have to keep true to our mission. The mind is its own place and in itself can make a heaven of hell a hell of heaven. So whether this place is heaven or hell depends on how you think about it. What matter where? If I be still the same and what I should be all but less than he whom thunder hath made greater. What does it matter where I am if I'm still the same guy? The same person I should be that is. The second most powerful just after God. Here at least we shall be free. The almighty hath not built here for his envy. God did not come and and uh, use hell for his own purposes. Will not drive us hence, so he will not try to kick us out from here. Here we may reign secure and in my choice to reign is worth ambition, though in hell. Worth here means worthy, so it's a worthy ambition for me to rule here in hell. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Uh, lots of you came up with the Chinese proverb, uh, So do you guys agree with this? Like, it doesn't matter. Like, is it hell? Is it heaven? You can decide for yourself. Doesn't matter where you are as long as you are the same person. It's better to be in control rather in hell rather than to follow God in heaven. Well, uh, some of the groups I talked to said it kind of makes sense. But other groups pointed out that this is all happening in his mind. He says, I can think of this place like heaven. But it doesn't change it into heaven. It's still hell. All of the pain and suffering of this place is not changed simply because Satan thinks of it as heaven. Uh, and then there's also the question of if he really is so free, why does he want revenge on God? Why did he want to fight God in the first place if wherever he goes, he can make it heaven? So in fact, what he's doing here is he's giving a speech to his followers. He's trying to gather their morale to, to reassure them that it is fine. The situation is fine. Uh, and that this is not necessarily a punishment if they don't let it become a punishment. Um, but none of this changes their actual situation. Uh, and then the second part of the question uh, is uh, Argument for Freedom, Book 5, 853. I think I forgot to mark Book 5, but it's somewhere on page uh, 17. 18, sorry, 18. Starting 853 here. Uh, and this is Satan speaking. That we were formed then, says thou. You're saying that somebody created us. We were created. And the work of secondary hands by task transferred from father to his son. And not only did God create us, he asked his son to create us. Strange point in new. This idea is very new and very strange. New is a bad thing. 
New means that you have no support, you have no evidence, no proof. Doctrine which we would know whence learnt. Doctrine referring to religious doctrine, religious ideas. So he's saying we would want to know where you learned this idea. We still say this in uh, today, right? Except we use a different language. Uh, in English, we would say, where did you get this idea? In Chinese, we would say, right? Doctrine which we would know whence learned. Whence means from where. Who saw when this creation was? Rememberst thou thy making while the maker gave thee being? Do you remember when God created you? We know no time when we were not as now, just like we are right now. No, none before us. Self begot, though we gave birth to ourselves. Beget means to give birth to. Self raised, we raised ourselves. By our own quickening power, so we gave, we had the power to make ourselves alive. Quickening is when you can first feel the fetus inside the womb. So we have the power to make ourselves alive. When fatal course had circled his full orb, the birth mature of this our native heaven, ethereal sons. There's a footnote. Let's see what the footnote says. Oh, it's explaining this part. OK, so this sentence is saying. Um, we made ourselves mature. Uh, as fate went on, the logic is kind of it's kind of different because in heaven there is no time. So instead of time, he says fate. As fate went on, we made ourselves mature. Uh, 864, our puissance, our power, this is from French, is our own. Our own right hand shall teach us highest deeds by proof to try who is our equal. So we teach ourselves to do great things. Uh, and if anyone wants to say that they are our equal, they have to basically fight us. They have to do something greater than we have done. They have to beat us in order to prove that they are our equal or even that they are more than our equal, that they are better than we are. Uh, so that's the basic argument that Satan is saying. Do you think this makes sense? Um, so I talked to three groups about this question. Every group agreed more or less with some parts of this speech. But in fact, the whole thing doesn't make sense. So let's start from there are three main points that don't make sense here. First, uh, line 856. Who saw when this creation was? Rememberst thou thy making while the maker gave thee being? Did you see when you were created? Do you remember when God created you? Satan is saying, if you don't, that means that you created yourself. But of course, this, does, this doesn't make sense. None of us remember when we were born, but we did not give birth to ourselves. So this is not logical. Continuing, we know no time when we were not as now, no none before us. We have always been like this. We don't remember a time before we appeared. Therefore, we created ourselves. Again, does not make sense. None of us remembers a time before we were created. But we did not create ourselves. And then finally, Satan is saying, because we created ourselves, if anyone wants to say that they are our equal or more powerful, they have to beat us. In other words, they can't simply give us orders. We are free. We don't have to follow others. 
And now already we know this doesn't make sense because they did not create themselves. But even if they did create themselves, this would still not make sense. Just because somebody is created or created themselves has nothing to do with whether they are free. For example, we were all created. We did not create ourselves. But we are free. We don't have to follow other people's orders. We choose to follow orders because it's easier than not to follow. But as you can tell from uh, politics around the world, sometimes orders are really hard to follow, and that's when we use our freedom. So we were created, but we're still free. Even if Satan were not created, even if Satan created himself, this does not necessarily mean that he is free. So the whole thing fall, falls apart. In fact, if you look at footnote four, that's what this says, right? Satan's illogical argument is that since the angels cannot remember their creation, they created themselves. It's illogical. Question two, Satan's plan, does it make sense? This was the second most popular question today. Uh, there are two selections. The first selection is another devil, Beelzebub, proposing a general plan. Uh, and then later in a selection I did not choose, we, we see Satan agreeing with this plan. So it's still Satan's plan. And the second selection here is Satan discovers the specific details of how to do the plan. So let's look at the first part. OK, yeah, so page nine. Beelzebub. Um, let's skip to page, uh, sorry, skip to line. 345. Here. There is a place. If heaven and prophetic fame in heaven or not, so if ancient prophecy and rumor are true, there is a place, another world. Uh, so I think I talked about this last week. Right? Air means to make a mistake. So if these prophecies and rumors are not mistaken, there's a place, another world, the happy seat or location or throne, one way, of some new race called man, about this time to be created like to us, which means like us, though less in power and excellence. So they're not as powerful. They're not as perfect, but favored more of him who rules above. But God loves humans more. And then the next few lines explain how he knows this. Uh, actually, let's go through this. So was his will pronounced among the gods. So God himself said this in heaven uh, to the other angels. And by an oath, that shook heaven's whole circumference confirmed. So God swore that he would create humans. And this oath was so powerful that it caused all of heaven to shake. Circumference is the outside of a circle. Uh, here it means boundary. Thither, which means to there, let us bend all our thoughts to learn what creatures there inhabit, of what mold, so what shape, or substance, how endued, which means how, what power they, uh, what abilities they have, and what their power and where their weakness, how attempted best, attempt means attack, by force or subtlety, should we fight them or should we cheat them? Though heaven be shut and heaven's high arbitrator sits secure in his own strength, so God, even though God is still secure up in heaven, this place may lie exposed 
the utmost border of his kingdom. So it's near the edge of God's kingdom, according to Satan. Left to their defense who hold it. And so it's so far away, maybe humans have to defend it themselves. Those who hold it, those who control it, have to defend it. Here, perhaps, some advantageous act may be achieved by sudden onset, which means by surprise. Onset means beginning. Either with hellfire to waste his whole creation. Waste means to destroy. The, the note says lay waste. It, this is a, a military term, which just means to completely destroy. We still use it today. So maybe we'll destroy it or possess all as our own and drive as we were driven the puny habitants. Uh, drive here means to kick out. So maybe we can take the place and kick out the puny little humans. Or if not drive, seduce them to our party, make them join us that their God may prove their foe to turn God into their enemy and with repenting hand abolish his own works. And so God, regretting creating humans, will destroy them himself. This would surpass common revenge. It would be even better than simple revenge and interrupt his joy in our confusion. So God is happy about sending us to hell. This will interrupt his happiness. And our joy upraised in his disturbance by making him feel disturbed, we would be happier. So this is Beelzebub's plan. Uh, Satan agrees, and then later on, he will discover the details about how to do this. On page. Ito. Somewhere around here. Ah, there we go. Okay, yeah. What page is this? 15. The bottom section of page 15. This is Satan talking. I think Satan talking to himself or like thinking to himself. One fatal tree there stands of knowledge called. So in there in Eden, there is a tree called knowledge and it is fatal. Forbidden them to taste. Humans cannot taste of this tree. Uh, cannot eat from this tree. Knowledge forbidden, suspicious, reasonless. There's no reason for it. Why should their Lord envy them that? Uh, the footnote says begrudge. To begrudge someone something means if you do it, it will make them not happy. So we can translate this as like uh, be controlling about. Why should God be controlling of humans about this one thing? Can it be sin to know? Sin, of course, is uh, Can it be sin to know? Can it be death? And do they only stand by ignorance? Are, do humans only exist because they are ignorant? They don't have knowledge. Is that their happy state? Happy means blissful, xingfu de. The proof of their obedience and their faith. So is the only reason humans are happy is because by listening to God, they prove that they follow him and they believe in him. Oh, fair foundation laid whereon to build their ruin. What a beautiful uh, foundation that I can build on to ruin humans. 
So like, what a great beginning to my plan, basically. Where on means on which. I think we talked about this last week. A foundation on which to build their ruin. Hence, I will excite their minds with more desire to know. And to reject envious commands. So I'll make them reject God's commands that try to control them. Invented with the design to keep them low, whom knowledge might exalt equal with God's. So these commands, I will make humans believe, were only created. Design means intention. They were invented only with the intention to keep humans low. And these same humans might become higher, exalted, higher with knowledge and become equal with God's. Here, of course, meaning angels. So that's what I'm going to tell the humans. Aspiring to be such. So when they want to become gods, they taste and die. They will eat from the forbidden tree and they will die. So the question is asking, does the plan make sense? The first part of the plan is saying we can't beat God but we can hurt him by making him destroy his favorite creation. And uh, every group I talked to about this question agreed. That makes sense. Even if you can't win heaven, you can still make God suffer. But the second part of the plan maybe is not so convincing. Satan is saying, God only gave one rule to humans. They cannot eat from this tree. What if I convince them that the only reason God does not want you to eat from this tree is because if you eat, you will become as powerful as he is and he doesn't want you to compete with him. Would that make you want to eat from the tree? We today might say yes, because we have something called ambition. But humans created without original sin, happy and obedient to God, don't have ambition. They don't think that they can improve their lives because Eden is already perfect. They don't try to grab for something better because they already have everything. So this part of Satan's plan makes sense to Satan because he has ambition. But it doesn't make sense for humans because Adam and Eve don't want anything better. So even though it doesn't make sense, we know that Satan succeeds. How? We'll discover this next week. Question three. Nobody took this question. Satan says, you know, I don't want to take revenge on somebody innocent in place of somebody who deserves revenge. Is this sincere? Let's look at this. Where's book four? Book two. Book three. Page 14, thank you. Book four, yes. Um, what line? 386 to 87, okay. So here in this scene, Satan discovers Earth. He found the place. And then he's saying, um, he's he's thinking about the humans that he's going to destroy. Um, and then he's saying, and therefore you will go to hell and all of your children will also go to hell um, after you eat from the forbidden fruit. 
386. Thank him who puts me loath to this revenge on you who wronged me not for him who wronged. So if you want to blame somebody, don't blame me, blame God. And he says, I, uh, because God makes, puts means makes me, and I am loath to this revenge. I Loath means don't want to. Reluctantly. Uh, revenge on you who wrong me not. You have not wronged me. You have not offended me. For means, as it says, in place of, instead of him who wronged. So he Satan knows that he's going to make humans suffer, uh, not because humans deserve it, but because God deserves it. That's part of his plan. And he's saying, uh, humans, if if you think this is unfair, don't blame me, blame God. And he continues. And should I at your harmless innocence melt? Should I let you go simply because you are innocent? As I do, yet public reason just honor an empire with revenge enlarged by conquering this new world. Um, so if I do, this would fulfill public reason and it would be just. Everybody would agree this is the right thing to do. Um, however, honor an empire with revenge enlarged by conquering this new world compels me now. So, but I still want to take over Earth and enlarge my kingdom by conquering you. And so to do what else though damned I should abhor. And this is the only reason I would do this thing that I don't want to do. Abhor means to feel horrified at. Thinking about it is horrible. Uh, but here, he, though damned, even if doing this would bring punishment onto me, I will still do this because I want to enlarge my kingdom. So when he says, you know, I really don't want to punish you innocent humans, is he serious? I don't think he cares. I think he's kind of laughing at humans, right? Oh, I, you poor innocent humans. I know you don't deserve it, but what can I do? You're standing in the way, right? So he's already starting to become sarcastic. Sarcasm will be a question next week. Uh, the use of humor, the use of language. Question four. Uh, nobody took this question. The idea is. God knows everything in advance. He knows what is going to happen. He is all powerful, all knowing. In this case, does it make sense for him to give us free will? Is it still a valuable thing? To allow us to make our own decisions. Um, so God knows that Adam and Eve will fall to Satan's plan. He knows that they will break the rule. Here. And that's what he's saying. Uh, let's see, where should we start? Here, 86. And now, through all restraint broke loose, he, Satan, wings his way not far off heaven in the precincts of light directly towards the new created world. And man there placed with purpose to essay. Essay means to try. If him by force he can destroy. He's going to see if he can destroy humans. Or worse, by some false guile, pervert. Pervert means to cheat. And shall pervert. So God is saying, and Satan will succeed. He will succeed in um, cheating humans. For man will hearken to his glozing lies. Humans will listen when Satan tries to flatter them. Pai ma pi. 
and easily transgress the soul command and humans will easily break the one rule. Soul pledge of his obedience. This one rule is the only sign that they still follow me. So will fall. Humans will fall. He and his faithless progeny. Progeny means children. So the punishment is not only on Adam and Eve, also on their children. Whose fault? Whose but his own? So God says it is human's own fault. Ingrate, which means someone who is ungrateful. He had of me all he could have. I made him just and right. Just means correct. Sufficient to have stood, though free to fall. So if man wanted to, humans could have not listened to Satan, but they will or they did, or they do. For God, there is no time. Past, present, future, same thing. So they could have rejected Satan, but they are still free to fall. They can still freely choose to listen to Satan. Let's skip a few lines here. 103. Not free. If they were not free, what proof could they have given sincere of true allegiance? If they were not free, how could they prove that they truly would follow me? If they had no choice to choose, how would I know that they truly do follow me? Uh, skipping a few more lines. Uh, 107. What pleasure I from such obedience paid? So if somebody who had no choice followed me, that's no value to me. They have no choice. When will and reason, reason also is choice, useless and vain of freedom, both despoiled, made passive, both had served necessity, not me, it, which is what I just said. If they had no choice, what use is it to me? Uh, and then line 114. God is basically saying that humans made their own choice as if predestination overruled their will. The idea of predestination is the idea that God has chosen for you already. The destination has already been chosen. It is predestination. And God is saying just because I chose for you does not mean you don't have freedom. Just because I chose for you does not take away your freedom. Does that make sense? We can think about this. Um, disposed by absolute decree or high foreknowledge. They themselves decreed their own revolt, not I. If I foreknew, if I knew in advance, Foreknowledge had no influence on their faults, which had no less proved certain unforeknown. The idea here is whether I knew or I didn't know in advance has no influence on how guilty they are. Does that make sense? God is saying, I knew. But even if I like, even though I know whether I know or I don't know, they're still guilty. I chose for them that they would break the rule, but they chose to break the rule. So they're still guilty. Does that make sense? That's the question. How valuable is this kind of free will? Is it really free will? Here's the thing. This question is a huge question. This is one of the biggest questions in Christian thought. If God knows everything and controls everything, then why did he blame us for breaking his rule? The logic here is 
even though I have set out the path for humans to follow, and I know that humans will do this, they still chose to do this. They had the ability to reject Satan, but I knew that they would not. It technically makes sense. Milton was very, very careful to make it make sense. It's like saying, uh, oh, I, there's no way to compare this because we're all humans. Um, OK, it's like saying, uh, I know that this new young puppy is probably going to shit somewhere inside the house. I can train it not to do that. I can train it to hold it in until they, it goes outside. So it does have the ability. But it, I know that right now it will choose to do it indoors. But I'm going to punish it anyway. Not anyway. I'm going to punish it because it did not use its ability to go outdoors, even though I know it wouldn't. See, there's no good way to explain this if you're not God. Um, OK, how about this? I give you a test. I know you're going to cheat. I'm not God, so I know it's very likely you are going to cheat. I also know that you, you should be able to do this test without cheating. So if you cheat, should I punish you? Yes, because you should be able to do it without cheating. And even though I know you're probably going to cheat, you still chose to do that. It, yeah, it feels like a trap, but the logic is is secure. The only reason it, we can't accept it is because we we humans cannot say 100% that you will cheat, but God can. That's the only difference. Um, and that part is what many people cannot accept. Um, so we can think of this as a kind of religious logic. If you think if you can accept that religious logic, then you can accept that God is making sense. If you cannot accept it, then God does not make sense here. But you have to understand the question. Uh, thankfully, God also gave us a way to repay our sins and enter heaven anyway, and that is question five. I don't think we have enough time to. Yes, we do. Why not? Let's look at this. Book three, so the logic of salvation, how can we get God's forgiveness? Uh, what plan did he set out for that? What was it? Uh, 3.173. So page 11. Uh, last section. This is God in heaven talking. Man shall not quite be lost, so not all of humans will be doomed. But saved who will, those who want to be saved will be saved. Yet not of will in him, but he can't save himself, but grace in me freely vouchsafed. The only way that humans can be saved is if I save them. But they have to be want to be saved. Uh, and then later, he uh, this part is his explaining what does it mean to be saved. Uh, let's skip. And then here he's saying some people will never change their minds, and so because they don't want to be saved, I will not save them. This is really controversial for Milton because this is not what the the Church of England believes. Um, Let's see. Uh, here, line 203. But yet all is not done. There's more to this plan. Man disobeying 
disloyal breaks his fealty. Fealty means loyalty and sins against the high supremacy of heaven affecting Godhead. So like mankind will try to become like gods. And so losing all to expiate his treason hath not left. Because he has uh, you like given all of themselves over to disobedience, they have nothing left that they can use to ask for forgiveness. Expiate means to uh, purge, to get rid of, to clean out. Treason here means betrayal. Not means nothing. So the idea is like, for example, if I break my friend's laptop computer, I have to pay him the money to repair it or give him a new one. But God is saying, I don't have any money left. I spent all of my money eating the forbidden fruit. So humans cannot, they have nothing that they can use to ask for forgiveness. And therefore, line 209, he with his whole posterity must die. Not just humans, but the children as well. Every generation, all of them are doomed. 210, unless for him, some other able and as willing pay the rigid satisfaction death for death. So humans must die unless there's someone who can and will pay the price, death for death. And then he says, any volunteers? And nobody volunteers. Uh, and then the son, uh, the name of Jesus in this poem is the son, volunteers. And he says on the next page, uh, let's see, where is it? 236. Behold me then, look at me, me for him, life for life I offer. On me let thine anger fall. Account me man, so think of me as a man, make me a human. I for his sake will leave thy bosom. Bosom means my your embrace, so like near you, your, the, 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 the realm of your, your care. I will leave your side basically. And this glory next to thee freely put off. I will freely give up the glory of sitting next to God in heaven. And for him, lastly, die well pleased. I will happily die for humans. On me, let death wreak all his rage. Under his gloomy power, death, I shall not long lie vanquished. I will not be conquered by death for long. Thou hast given me to possess life in myself forever. By thee I live, though now to death I yield. Uh, and am his due, all that of me can die. Yet that debt paid, thou wilt not leave me in the loathsome grave. His prey, nor suffer my unspotted soul forever with the corruption there to dwell. But I shall rise victorious and subdue my vanquisher, death. So the idea is, Jesus, uh, the son is saying, I will give myself up for humans, but I know, God, that you will save me from death. You will bring me back to heaven after I'm done. So the question is, does this logic make sense? There are two parts, right? The son is saying, I will become human and sacrifice myself for humans. And the second part is, after I'm done, you, God, will bring me back to heaven. One group took this question and they believed that uh, the first part makes sense, right? You can pay back for somebody else. The second part is also religious logic. So God will just bring Jesus back and that's it. So like, because like, if I have to pay back for my friend, usually I would have to negotiate with my friend how my friend would pay me back. But here God is saying uh, his son will pay back for humans and then we're done. I'll just bring him back to heaven. So 
you can also say like the son is not human, right? He is eternal like God. So you can't really make him suffer as a God. You can't, you can only make him suffer as a human. And as a human, he pays the ultimate price. As a human, he dies. You can't make the human Jesus suffer more than that. But Jesus as a God, you can't make him suffer at all. So how would God negotiate with his son about this debt anyway? Again, it's religious logic. They're all gods. The logic is different from human logic. If you think it makes sense, that means uh, if you agree with this religious logic, then you think it makes sense. If you don't agree, then you think it doesn't make sense. OK, questions? Right, so for next week, please read up to the first half of book nine. Um, we're going to divide book nine into two parts because it is a very important book. We're going to be reading a lot from book nine, but it's too long for one week. So please read up to page 9. I remember I marked it. Oh, I didn't mark it. Jesus. OK, please read to page 32, line 781. End at page, uh, end at line 781. This is a really important line. Reaching to the fruit she plucked, she eat. So we're going to end exactly after Eve eats from the forbidden fruit. Uh, next week, no class. Please come back. Uh, in two weeks.